and the girl didn't escape, huh? No, she didn't escape. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this off for just a second and check something out. So hold that thought. Okay. Well, when I was working on the F building, I, not to my personal knowledge, but I heard that at various times, three different men, no, four different men had escaped, and I knew for sure one had escaped because uh, he was hit by a freight train. Hmm. And it was in the newspaper. Wow. And uh, the other three, I don't know if they caught, if they found them or anything. And had they escaped from the F building? Or no, 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 no. Uh, just various places? Just the grounds, I don't know where. Okay. Did you ever hear about any women escaping from there? Mm, except the one that we found, no. And where was that? I forgot. In the F building, F1. Yeah, can you give me the details of what that was? I forgot. Well, apparently somebody had left the back door unlocked and she just walked away. And they subsequently they found her and brought her back. Oh, where'd they find her? I don't know. Okay. Had she left the ground or they found her on the ground still? I'm not sure. All right. And then, um, and you worked there from when to when? 1955 to 1960. Okay, and so you never, you don't recognize the picture that we showed you of Joyce's it mom? It's familiar, but I don't, I couldn't really swear to it. All right, and did anybody else, uh, while you were there, did they, did you hear anybody else talk about any women that ran away from there, or that escaped no. from there? Okay, and um, so you mentioned uh, about a lady that was brought in, I think by the the local police yes. and that some people got hurt trying to restrain her or something? Yes, yeah, she was very violent and uh, she was thrashing around and hitting people and kicking people and uh, uh, there was five policemen and four male technicians and four psych techs, female techs and uh, she was just so violent that we were trying to restrain her and sedate her so that we could work with her, you know, and uh, she broke all the restraints and uh, she hurt three different people, were huh. injured while they were trying to, actually was wrestling with her because she was just, you know, so, so violent. Wow. And uh, so then they finally got her restrained and put her in isolation, seclusion. Okay, and was that the one that you mentioned last time we met that uh, later on she wound up dying in the hospital somehow? Yes. And what happened? I forgot what you said. She was having uh, shock treatments and uh, Dr. Pateau was, uh, was showing us how to do a shock treatment and, and how to, I don't know, everything. He was, he was really trying to, I don't know if he was trying to help us or what, but anyway, he was explaining everything, and so he was giving these treatments, and she, uh, usually, they would give, like, a, a, tr a shock, and it would wait till the patient stopped thrashing around, was quiet, and they would give another, you know, maybe three. With this, he kept giving it and kept giving it, and, uh, she didn't recover, she just died. Oh, so did you see two people die, or was this the same person? No, just the one person. And so this same person was the one that had been in there a few weeks before, and you'd seen her in the other, in the place they her, bring her in. I saw, I was in, I was working receiving and treatment, receiving and treatment, and she, they brought her in, and I saw her over a period of time for a couple months. And, you know, she was. Wow. Uh, she was delusional. She had a check from. Uh, God, I can't think of his name now. No, Barry no. Moore. Huh? Barry Moore. No. Oh, Fairbanks. Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. She had a hmm. check for like twenty thousand dollars, and she was showing it all over. And she would take her clothes off, and I mean, she was a character. <laughs> and who's Douglas Fairbanks? 
He was a there's your daughter. Actor, I believe. Your your daughter's out there, but she said tell her you're out. The so Douglas Fairbanks, who was that? Junior. He Junior. was a movie star. Oh. So this lady thinks she was a movie star too or something? No. She thought <laughs> she was in love with Douglas Fairbanks Junior. Huh. She I think she thought he was her lover and he gave her this check. He may have been Maybe a real was. Wow. Wow. Okay. She was so. beautiful. She was very statuesque and she was huh. like I said, she'd strip off her clothes and Wow, and it was a show. <laughs> and then later she was the one that died on the electric shock table. Yeah. And you don't remember what her name was? No, I don't. I okay. can see her face, but not her name. Wow. Um, and then you were saying if someone died and they had treatment with the doctor within 24 to 48 hours, they, they went to the morgue? They went to the hospital morgue if they had been under a doctor's treatment. If they had not been under a doctor's treatment, it was a coroner's case, and they came out, the county coroner came out and investigated. Okay, and how many times did you see the county coroner come out to investigate? Personally, I only saw him once. And what were the circumstances around that one? Uh, we were changing the patients at 6 o'clock in the morning before the day shift came on, and uh, this patient had expired. We had seen her at two o'clock, and uh, she just died, and so we had to call the coroner. Wow. So most of the time, when someone died, they stayed within the hospital. Well, it depends. The hospital if, morgue. If if they were if they were under doctor's care, and they didn't have relatives, then they went to the hospital morgue. If they had relatives then they were allowed to go to a regular mortician. Okay. And so if they didn't have family and they died there, did they cremate the bodies or what happened to them? I believe so, yes. Okay. And were you ever in the crematory or did you ever hear anything about it? I've never been in the crematory. There was always an odor that you could smell. And I have been in the morgue. And which part of the hospital was the morgue in? Oh, I think it was in the basement of the receiving building. I'm not sure, but I think that's where it was. Okay. And the receiving building, which building was that, do you know? Was there a building number or? It was just called receiving and treatment. The patients were brought in with ambulances or the police or whatever, however they were brought. Okay. And did you ever see the uh, Stockton City Police out there in investigating anything, or the state police? The state police came out. I don't remember. I thought it was the sheriff's department, but that I saw. Well, yeah, I don't know. the The state is saying that it wasn't their responsibility that to oversee the morgue and the crema crematory. Yeah. That it was the city. And the city says it was never their responsibility, it's the state. So they're saying that if anything happened out there, then it was the, I guess the CHP or the state police used to be called something else, and they were the ones that came out. I don't know. The only ones I saw was the county uh, sheriffs. I saw city police that brought people in sometimes, and I saw the county coroner.